Hello, so today class we're going to be talking about body and art and the way that things are, the way that the body has been represented in art and um, how kind of we use body and art. Um, so do any of you guys have any examples of like ways you've seen the body used in art, the way that the bodies have been incorporated and so on? <laughs> Good, so there's many ways that body and art kind of interplay with each other. One of the biggest ways is that the body is literally represented in art. Throughout history, we see physical representations of the human body in portraits, in cave paintings, in sculpture throughout all of art history, all the way dating back to the Paleolithic era. Um, another way that art and body is used is literally called body art, where people use the human body as either a tool, they use it as a performance, and they or they even paint straight onto the body to create this new genre of art. This also includes performance art, which is where an artist is performing a very specific act, and with that act, they are creating an art piece. Um, and this kind of dives into the idea of including the viewer to become a part of the piece, not just the artist kind of creating something just for themselves, but kind of really incorporating the viewer and incorporating the viewer's experience to, to really um, amplify the art piece. Some of the big ideas that surround body and art include some conscious, emotion, spirituality, beauty, diversity, memory, identity, struggle, comfort, gender, family, adventure, risk, movement, life and death, narrative, and culture. So oftentimes a lot of pieces of art that do incorporate the human body as a main subject really kind of you are meant to represent these big ideas that um, artists are trying to share and kind of shed light on the importance of these specific big ideas. Really important artist that I would like to kind of highlight that kind of plays with all these really big ideas is Lorna Simpson. So um, she's a contemporary artist. She got her BFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York. She got her Master's in Fine Arts from the University of California, San Diego. And she really is a pioneer for conceptual photography. She kind of mixes mediums and mixes prints to kind of um, really shed light on the ideas that she really wants to kind of portray in her art. Um, her work combines photography and text to kind of challenge narrow and conventional views of gender, identity, culture, history, and memories. Um, one of the big things that she really incorporates in art is text and, and photography. She mixes these two to kind of emphasize um, what she wants to share and how she wants the viewer to really react. So she has very um, explicit um, short phrases on all of her pieces to kind of really stick with the viewer kind of quickly and right away. Um, a big, big images that she uses often is she uses reappropriated segregation era photos to kind of create this conversation about blackness in America and her role as a black woman and the experience that she has had and the experiences of others in the past who have they have had with this same of art that I think really highlights some of these big ideas that we're trying to um, talk about is Wigs from 1994. So Wigs is a series of 21 different lithograph prints on felt. So what she does is she arranges all these photos in a very specific way to kind of tell a story and kind of get the viewer to think about what they're looking at. Um, so she really explores the play between historical memories, culture, and identity and she really wants the viewer to understand how race and gender kind of shape the way that people interact with each other. Um, through text and images, she refers to the body without directly showing the body. And especially with this um, specific piece, she uses wigs as an important part of black culture and especially black female culture to kind of highlight how, to highlight her own experience and to highlight the experience of thousands of others. Um, so the next artist that I wanted to highlight that really discusses these ideas is Jenny Saville. So I think she's a perfect example. She's a British artist. She attended the Glasgow Art of School in Scotland, um, and she studied in Cincinnati in the early 1990s. And that's where her um, her big kind of shift in her artwork really happened. She started to look at bodies in a very specific way. So um she wants to look at women in an unidealized way. She doesn't like this idea of how women are always depicted to be perfect, skinny, tall, pretty. She wants to kind of show true women, true bodies, and truly how kind of the experience of a woman is. Um, 
So she actually was, um, she would actually observe um, plastic surgeries when she was um, first starting out. And that's how she really kind of got a grip of what flesh looks like and how she really was able to paint flesh this way. Um, she uses paint to really sculpture build up form and make these figures feel really lifelike and skin like um her work aims to show physicality of the body as well as address body image beauty and ideas of motherhood um and kind of her own experiences with that um a lot of her work is very fleshy and distorted to kind of get um viewer to look deeper to get the viewer to really think about why she may be using brush strokes like this or what story she is trying to um portray um she uses this to kind of challenge the way that we think about painting in a contemporary way. Because oftentimes when we think of oil paint, many people think about all the old Renaissance masters. However, she's kind of shedding to light how paint can be used in this new, fun, kind of sculptural way to create these really thought-evoking So um, I wanted to kind of highlight this specific piece. It's called The Mothers. It's from 2011. It's oil and charcoal on canvas. And it's pretty big it's uh 106 inches by 86 inches which is pretty massive however um i want to kind of focus on this piece because i really love the way that she mixes the charcoal gesture drawings with that oil paint on top and it kind of sh and that really shows like the um like the chaos of like what it is to be a mother the way that the babies are squirming the way that she shows herself grabbing them the way she shows herself trying to hold them while you can physically see them trying to like cry and squirm and move away and i think this piece really illustrates not only her style but also kind of the story she's trying to tell how like being a mother is raw being a mother is messy being a mother is difficult and she uses the figure and she uses the body to kind of really express this and kind of give a lot of um, evoke emotion within the um so the next artist that i want to highlight kind of takes a very different direction when it comes to body and art um she's based out of new orleans and her processes are very based on her drawings are very based on the process and the act of her making this drawing and it becomes really much of a performance she uses her body as a tool to create these pieces that track her movements so she literally sits on this canvas and she goes up and down back and forth tracing her body movements she kind of dances she kind of stretches and she makes this really performance to show this like large scale kinetic very symmetrical drawing um it's actually really interesting how symmetrical the body actually is on its own um and how it creates these patterns of her just going being very repetitive and very obsessive and going over and over and over and over and getting really messy with her materials um on the next slide i have a little video of one of her perf actual performances um and i just love the way that she uses the body movement and i love the way that she kind of thinks about the body in a different way to create these pieces Skip a little bit So while watching the video, you see she literally is just tracing her body movements. She's moving up and down. She's rolling around across the canvas. And she's just kind of letting her body do what it does and just tracking the movements with the charcoal. I love watching her kind of spread it and smear it. Um, and as the video continues, she gets like progressively more and more dirty. And it becomes this act of this whole, like, all-encompassing act to kind of create this piece. <laughs> So a couple of other examples that I wanted to show you guys was um, versions of the of the body and art that are actually physically you guys can go and see. So this one's actually on view at the MoMA. Um, it's anthropo Anthropometry, um, Princess Helena by Yves Klein. So he has a whole series of these types of paintings where he smears his iconic Yves Klein blue um, all over a model's body and she will crawl across the canvas and roll across the canvas and he's kind of one of the pioneers for these like 
performative interactive pieces he would actually have people come watch the performance they would all sit around and watch as these models would like roll across the canvas and he similar to heather hansen she would um use her body as kind of the tool same thing he uses the bodies of the models to be a tool um and the next artist that i wanted to highlight that also has things on view that use the body is kiki smith um she's more of a contemporary artist but um I just think her work is very appropriate for this. She has, this one is specifically called Lilith. It was from 1994 and it is on view at the Met. If you go to the Met and you see this piece, it is like attached to the wall. You walk up the stairs, you turn the corner and it is just staring at you. So Kiki Smith wanted to create this um, kind of contrast between the dark bronze body and then these glass blue beady eyes. Um, and Lilith is actually a a she demon from ancient babylon um she was kind of the first witch um i would say and she kind of wanted to show lilith as kind of this dark force this powerful force and use the human body as a way to really encompass her um and lilith is kind of this female power that turns against men um and she's kind of representative of like with, with female empowerment so some project ideas that um relate to these big ideas that can be done at home. Um, one of them is uh, journal and illustrate some dreams you have. So um, oftentimes you have a dream and you forget about it. And one of the best ways to kind of remember them is like, as soon as you wake up, you think about it, write it down, and then come back to it later and try to illustrate what happened in the dreams. So kind of tapping into your subconscious and fl flowing into a little bit of surrealism and trying to incorporate how your dreams filter in your subconscious and how that reflects on you as a person um another quick little project idea um that can be done at home is portraits and drawings of family members um that's a really great way to kind of show culture to show identity and to show off your family um it's a great way to since we're all stuck at home with this quarantine it's a great way to kind of engage with your family as well as kind of reflect on your culture reflect on the past and so on um and the final project this um I want you guys to take a pen or pencil or go outside and do it with chalk um, and just create and just draw. All right. I want you to shut off your brain and just meander around the page, meander around the asphalt, whatever you have, and just meander. Shut off your brain and just move your hand where it goes and keep going. Go for like, let's say like six, seven minutes, right? Just keep going over and over and over and create this pattern. I want you guys to really tap into your subconscious and the movements of your body and your joints and your arms and how that creates a piece without you kind of thinking and rather you kind of hyper focusing and just kind of create it um or even go outside do it on the ground just kind of like heather hansen get chalk roll around do circles do big things and kind of see what different patterns and what different ideas you guys really kind of come up with um so if you have any questions please let me know and uh